Shadows are supposed to be insignificant and in the background, right? But the shadow figures in these true scary stories have a mind all of their own. Keep listening to hear what happened and don't forget to like and subscribe for more chilling true tales. The Orchard Susie, who was about 16 years old at the time, lived with her parents and her sister. She suffered from asthma, and although she was already in bed trying to sleep, she woke up having difficulty breathing one night. Her asthma medication was located on her dresser table, but she had to get up out of bed to go and get it. She was comfortable in bed and didn't want to get up, but her difficulty breathing was slowly getting worse, so she knew she needed to use her medicine. As she sat up and got out of bed, she looked around her room. Something caught her attention and she jumped startled. She saw a figure standing in the doorway. Although the room was quite dark, there was still some light coming in from the outside. She could clearly see that it was the figure of a man wearing what looked like a grey overcoat. She noticed that the man also had a beard, but other than that, she couldn't make out any further details. She was scared at first and froze. She thought initially that the figure may have been her father. But then she realised that her father neither had a grey jacket like that, nor did he have a beard. Frightened that the man may be a burglar, she jumped back into bed as quickly and quietly as possible. She hid under her covers for a time, and when she looked back out, the figure was gone. She then fell asleep again. In the morning at breakfast, Susie spoke to her older sister about the incident the night before. Her older sister was quite shocked by it, but had no explanation as to what it could be. They told their parents, but the parents played it down, and they said that Susie must have had a dream. A few weeks later, Susie was with her older sister in their backyard. They noticed by chance that there was something hard under the floor near the back door. Susie and her sister started to do a little bit of digging and discovered an old set of steps leading from nearby their back door to the backyard. Filled with curiosity, the older sister, who was studying journalism, began to do some research on the property to see what she could find out. She soon discovered that their property used to be an orchard. There was nothing unusual about that, but it explained the steps. After all, they could have been part of a previous building. With the information on the property were some old photos that showed the previous owners of that land, and in it, Susie saw a familiar figure. A man wearing an overcoat, and who had a beard. The only information they could find on him was that this previous owner had died of a heart attack in the orchard many years before. Is it possible that he never left? Shadow Mirror Kayla was about 10 years old when she had this experience. She shivered and appeared visibly uncomfortable as she told me this story. She lived with her parents and her brother at the time, and remembers that night she woke up at an odd hour and couldn't fall back to sleep. When this would happen, she said that it always helped her when she went to see her parents, and that they would usually let her sleep in the bed with them. She got out of bed and sleepily stopped in her doorway. Her brother's bedroom doorway was directly opposite her doorway, and in the dimness of the night, she could see inside. She remembered that it was quite dark in his room as well, but she could still see shapes in his room. She could make out his small desk, his cupboard, the end of his bed, and then next to his bed she noticed a shadow. It was more like the silhouette of a man in her brother's room, and it was looking down at him as he slept. She froze, hoping she wouldn't be noticed. She watched scared as the silhouette simply stood there without making a sound. Then finally, it moved, and her heart jumped. The silhouette walked over to look at the toys on her brother's shelf. Kayla described the figure as not being a solid person and the fact that it wasn't a solid person really frightened her. Hoping that her brother had awoken by now, she said his name nervously. 
Her voice seemed to trail off in the dead silence of the night. He didn't respond. As her eyes had adjusted a little bit more to the dimness now, she had a close look at her brother in his bed, but he was fast asleep. Then, suddenly, the silhouette turned to face her as if it were looking at her. Kayla felt as if her heart stopped. Scared and unsure what to do, she felt as if she could barely breathe from fear. Frozen there, she tried to convince herself that it must have been her own shadow. She turned around slightly, but she realised that there was no light source behind her. She turned back to look into her brother's room and froze in abject fear when the figure started to walk towards her and stopped and stood in her brother's doorway, just as she had stopped in hers. Kayla was so scared that she felt as if she was getting lightheaded. Her legs couldn't hold her weight and she started to lower herself to the ground until she was on her knees. A few seconds later, the figure in her brother's doorway mimicked her by dropping down to its knees in exactly the same way she had. So scared she couldn't even cry, Kayla said that she repeated prayers to herself, the only ones she could think of at the time. This otherworldly standoff remained, with the figure mirroring her until the tension grew to be too much. She finally found the courage to run out of her room and run to the safety of her parents' room to wake them up. On waking her parents, they hurriedly checked the house, but there was no one there. Under the door. Fiona lived at home with her mother, and she was in her late teens. It was early evening, and she had just gotten home from her casual job. She decided she would go and have a shower, and noticed that no one else was home. She went and got her clothes ready for her shower and passed by the bedrooms in the hallway. When she did so, she realised that her mother's bedroom was wide open and that the room was empty. When she got out of the shower a short time later, she noticed that the door to her mother's bedroom was now closed. She just assumed that her mother had gotten home. But then her attention was drawn to the slit underneath her mother's bedroom door. Through that gap between the floor and the door, she could clearly see that it appeared that as if the lights were on in the room, and that shadows were moving about the room, as if more than one person was walking around in there. But despite this movement of shadows under the door, she stood there confused for a few seconds. Fiona wanted to call out to her mother, but started to grow afraid. Something wasn't right. If her mother was walking around in the room, Fiona would at least be able to hear something, anything. Fiona grew very scared and hid herself in her cupboard until her mother actually got home a while later. When her mother discovered her cowering in the cupboard, Fiona emerged shaking. She walked out of her room with her mother and looked down the short hallway to her mother's bedroom. The door was wide open, the lights were off, and there was no one in the room. What do they seek? Rachel lived with her parents and her brother Dylan in Wollongong. They had a nice home and a good family life, and more importantly, nothing creepy or paranormal ever happened to the family. Rachel recalled that one night as she lay asleep in her room, she started to stir. She did this for a while and soon woke up. In the dimness of the night, she thought she could see movement in her room, and she tried to focus her eyes. Soon she realised that it was no trick of the light. She could clearly see two dark figures like shadows in her room. They were rummaging around her room, looking in drawers and on her dressing table, as if they were looking for something. But they were doing it all without making a single noise, which she found strange. At first she chose to ignore it, she thought it was probably her brother and a friend of his who were staying the night at their house. After all, it was the most logical conclusion. She watched the two shadowy figures move about her room. She wondered what her brother could possibly want from there. But the more she thought about it, the less it made sense. These two shadowy figures were moving quite quickly, almost unnaturally, and they were rummaging, but there was no noise. And on top of that, they seemed not to be solid the entire time. 
The realization hit Rachel that something was wrong, and she started to get very scared. The figures continued moving about her room, searching unrelentingly for something. In her fear, Rachel called out to the figures she had at first assumed was her brother and his friend. She said softly, Um, Dylan? There was no reply, and no reaction. The figures just kept searching. In fright, she covered her head with a blanket and hid, trying not to make a noise. When she eventually looked out, the figures were no longer there. And in the morning, she found that nothing in her room had been moved. Make sure you like and subscribe and click on screen for more true ghost stories and paranormal events. And send us your true ghost stories. Our contact details are below.